Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are you ready for today's broadcast? Can we call for that daily bread? Today is Friday. So listen, call it and release your faith to receive all of it. Praise God. Join me right now. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen. Expect a miracle today. Praise God. There's something I always do with, with, with our children when I take them to school. After, we you know, from, from when we start driving down to school, we begin to make declarations over that day. And then at the end, the last thing we always say, I always get them to scream. I'm going to have a great day. Praise God. Yeah, you know, I want you to say that. Now, if you're where you can scream. I want you to scream as you can. Say, I'm going to have a great day. Praise God. Yeah, you surely are going to have a great day. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. A miracle is taking place in your life. Yes. Things are not going to end up the way it seems. No, 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 no. Your expectation will not be cut off. Your expectation from the Lord will not be cut off. That which you are believing from the Lord will not be cut off. Praise God. Release your faith today for a miracle. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, the love of God, I, I took this whole week to show you the character of his love. And, and truly speaking, this is something you need to pay attention to and meditate on until it takes a hold of your heart. You know, that's what we do with our private time. That's what we do in the night. That's what we do in the day. Meditating on His Word. Always having one thought going through our hearts from the Lord. We're like, wow. And when you begin to listen greatness is ahead of you i'm telling the truth greatness is ahead of you whatever the outcome of your life will be i told you that yesterday or two days ago will be as a result of the things you say and the things you do now Greatness is actually ahead of you. No doubt about that. God has made it so. You begin your journey. And all that you are supposed to do is to check out your response. What comes out of your mouth. Which will show what is in your heart. And keep your heart clean, brothers and sisters. Keep your heart clean. A clean heart will create opportunities for you. Why? Because you see, a, a, a blind heart will make you lose opportunities even when they are right before you. When people allow themselves to be... Now, life, life will throw challenges at you. Guess what life is trying to do? Life is trying to make you a failure. Oh yes, life is trying to make you a failure. It will throw challenges at you. But how you respond will only show if you know where you're going to. I read this from a book many years ago, a book on success. I can't remember who gave that quote. Maybe it was unknown or something. I can't remember now. But I read this quote in that book. It says, The world stands aside to let any man pass who knows where he's going. Ah, that word stuck in my heart. Like, how true? How true? You've got to know where you're going. And you don't have to have all the superpowers. You don't have to have all the intelligence in the world. You just have to know where you are going and be focused on it. Everything life is going to throw at you are going to be opportunities for you to step in there. It depends on how you respond to them. We've got great examples in scriptures. David's life is one. Joseph's life is another. Several scriptures we find. Several places in scriptures we find. Jesus, imagine Jesus. He was born in the wrongest place 
to be giving birth to. Imagine someone telling you today that he was born in, in, in the same place Jesus was born. Say, come, what happened to your parents? That's a question you ask. Yeah, your parents did not try at all. What happened to them? Is it that there was no money to go to the hospital or what? And there are people who have said, see, my life is just affected because, you know, in fact, from the gist, my parents said, the day they were supposed to give her to me was the day the hospital went on strike. Do you know where they gave her to me? They gave her to me in the car. It's even better. Jesus. You know how a baby cries first? Now, most children, yeah, yeah, yeah. They see beautiful faces doting on them. Hello, hello. And Jesus, when he cried and opened his eyes, he said, what the hell? Oh, oh, like, ah, what's going on here? Where have I been born to? <laughs> Praise God. And as though that was not enough, <laughs> Less than two years down the line, there was a manhunt for him. And they had to, his parents had to chase, they had to run away to another country. What a way to start life. But he today is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He rules in all the earth. Praise God. So don't tell me my life is the way because of the school I went to. Nah, never. My life is the way it is because of the whatever. Nah, is is wrong. It's not true. Your life is the way it is because of the decisions you have taken and the actions you have taken. The things you have said and the actions you have taken. That is what has shaped your life to where it is right now. And 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 listen, it's important you own up and start adjusting it. Some, you know, some of you have said things, you know, for many years, I can never do this. I can never do this. And then life itself will throw that challenge at you and you fall flat. Because number one, you didn't mean what you were saying. Life will always test you. If you start today and say, I'm going to be rich, I'm going to be very rich. I'm giving you an example. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be very rich. Do you know what's going to happen to you? Life will throw the opportunities at you. And one of those opportunities will be a temptation to steal, a temptation to be corrupt. Now, when that temptation comes, your interpretation is what's going to matter. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be rich. Somebody walks up to me and says, Come, there's this opportunity. We can be rich when we do this thing. Say, Okay, what is it? There's some corrupt things we need to do. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe this is God. Ah, I think I should take advantage of this opportunity. They say opportunity comes but once. Let me take advantage. Come, tell me, how do we go about this thing? You didn't believe you will be rich. You didn't believe you will be rich. That's what happened to you. You didn't believe you would be rich. If you believed you would be rich, you wouldn't have joined. Because now you're thinking, this is my opportunity to be rich. So you didn't believe you would be rich. If you did, see, at that moment, you will be sober. Jesus, when he was tempted of the devil, he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He was told, if you command this stone, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Now, I'll tell you something. When, when, when you are too full of the anointing, because it happens sometimes in our lives, you, you are just full. And at that moment, you actually would feel that you can do anything. And people have gone into errors. That, that few minutes that this thing happens, people have gotten into errors. I remember many years ago, I was praying. And I, had, I was in school then. You know, I had gone to this place to pray. And it's where we called the dam back then in school. And I was in the very place where the water the the, con the construction was made where the water comes in and drops so one deep place so they, they made a roof over it so i was there praying 
And while I was praying, the presence of the Lord was so strong over me. I, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. It was so strong over me. I just felt at that moment I could do anything. I just felt, you know, you get to that point, you just feel anything can just happen now. Anything, anything. There's a sick person. I mean, you, I mean, even if there's a dead person around you at that moment, you can just touch the person and the person will rise. In that state, I heard a voice. Do you know you can jump into this place now and nothing will happen to you? The moment I heard that voice, something just snapped. I just said, liar. Because I, 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 for some reason, I knew this wasn't God. I knew it was the devil. But someone who doesn't understand will hear. Now, I was already feeling so high in the spirit, praise God. I felt I could do anything. And then in the midst of that, because that, 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 see, the fact that you're too full of the anointing, Satan is not scared of your anointing. In fact, when you're so full of the anointing, is when he is attracted the most to you. So don't think at that point anything we hear do. No. You have to weigh everything you do. Praise God. So someone will hear that kind of thing and say, wow, I'm going to take, I'm going to take on that word and jump. So when, when Satan spoke to Jesus and said, if you're the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Jesus knew who was talking. He knew. Did he have the power to command those stones? Yes, he did. But he knew not to respond. Say, hey, man shall not live by bread alone. Or by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So I'm not going to make bread because I should make bread. Because God can actually feed me. That's what he meant. Now the Bible says after that the devil came and took him to um, a high pinnacle. And said, jump. For he has given his angels charge over you. Now Jesus actually felt that way. The way I felt that day. You know, that if you jump from this then nothing will happen to you. But he says, hey, 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 it is written, shall not tempt the Lord your God. What will my jumping do? Which soul is going to save? That's just tempting God. Someone wakes up and says, I want to prove the power of God. I'm walking into a lion's den. That's tempting God. What will you walk into a lion's den do? See that now? This is, no. Now, when someone does that, they hear their voice. The devil didn't succeed in that. And the Bible says he showed him all the kingdoms of this world and says, Look, I will give this to you if you just bow down and worship. And Jesus said, No. It's only God I will worship and serve. Soberness. Now, the reason was because Jesus had been ordained to perform bread miracle. Jesus has been ordained to jump right into hell. Jesus has been ordained to become the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's been ordained for him. So Satan wanted to come and take the glory of that miracle. That's all Satan was after. So most times when you're tempted in a particular line, be smart enough to know that I'm being tempted in this line because I have been ordained to fulfill this thing. So you're declaring, I'm going to be very rich. God's going to bless me. Then the temptation comes. You're going to be very rich. Oh yeah, see opportunity. Take it. And you see how corrupt that is. I say, maybe this is God. It's not God. It's not God. Then by the time you take it, and everybody begins to see you, ah, he has money now. Wow, he used to say it. He used to say it. And then later on, you see, that's the thing about this, this thing. If you're sincere, it won't take you so long a time. You will enjoy for that moment. But after a while, you begin to feel disgusted in yourself. And nobody's going to see that. Everybody says, oh, he's, yeah, this guy is so blessed. He's so, 
but only you wake up every night and be asking yourself, what did I do? I can, there's a part of this testimony I cannot share. Why? Because it was ordained for you to be, but Satan has snatched the glory. He said, oh, Pastor, so how do I get back? It's very simple. Repent. How do I repent? Turn away from everything. Just turn away. And go back to the Lord that was leading you somewhere before. You have to turn away from everything. Because, see, now you can take the drastic measure yourself and say, you know what? All these things I've gotten, I know God is not going to use them. I know. They will not bring blessings to my life. So let me give them away and trust in the Lord. That's the hard and fast way to get out of it and get into God's plan. The other slow way is when you begin to work with the Lord. And then over time, you are going to eventually see that everything you have gained through corrupt means will be taken away from you. They will all be taken away from you, one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. If your heart is genuinely repentant. And then as it's taken away, he is replacing. That's the thing about God. He is replaced. He will take away, teach you, and then replace. Your response, your actions, and your words. They are the two things that will push you over in life. People have mistreated you. What's your response? What actions have you taken? Now, this doesn't in any way mean you allow people to treat you as dormant and just sit down there. No, sometimes. Your response is to put things in place. You see that now? Because sometimes actions are a wake up call to you, to who you are. It's not for you to start whining, oh, see what the, my husband did to me, see what this person did to me, see what my wife did to me, see what my siblings did to me, see what my friend. No, 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 no. Don't sit down there whining. Just be smart. Wow. Why did this thing happen? Why did it happen? Oh, I see. I see the loophole that I left open. I see. Ah, okay. Let me correct them. You begin to correct those things. And put yourself in place where that shouldn't happen again. Praise God. Listen. The love of God. I, I, I showed you this week how to not just receive now. Now I'm showing you the quality of love you receive. And when you receive that quality of love, then you begin to leave it because you believe it. Then you begin to give it out. Can we make the world a better place? By showing how God loves. By loving the same. I pray for you on this Friday. that you will grow in Him and in His love. And that your heart be filled with His person and His thoughts. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive the power of the Lord in your heart and let it heal every brokenness. Everything that is broken in your heart, receive the strength of God right now. Receive the love of God right now and be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you on Monday. Yes, we will see you on Monday. Praise God. God bless you. Bye.